CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... great story in a phenomenon called fate. But the truth of the matter is, man makes his own destiny. We ourselves control that vital steering mechanism within each of us that determines whether or not we turn a certain corner, cross a crucial street, choose the right or the left fork in a road. In essence, we control that special moment that will determine the course of the rest of our lives. What you say is impossible, Professor. I can do it, Your Excellency. I am a scientist, and I tell you it can be done. I can send a man back, back into time. Oh, insanity. And once I've sent this person back, I will have changed everything. Because history hinges on just one man. And who might that be? You, of course, General. You. You. Our mystery drama, A Point of Time, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Victoria Dan and stars Norman Rose and Jackson Beck. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Welcome to the year 2052. Welcome to the celebration. The celebration of what? Uh, But of course, how could you know? It's the Jubilee. The 25th anniversary of the new regime of the great North Continent. The commemoration of one quarter century of perfectly planned peace. Of carefully controlled tranquility. In all, an era of imperiously imposed rules and regulations. But... Is such a state so undesirable? After all, personal freedom is not too high a price to pay for prosperity. His Excellency, the Supreme High Commander of the Great North Continent, spirit and guiding hand of the new regime, General Franklin Ulysses Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, loyal citizens, we are assembled here today to observe this, our glorious 25th birthday. A quarter century ago today, the great revolution laid to rest forever the cruel inefficiency and waste of the old regime. But all the old ways have not completely disappeared. We must remain eternally vigilant ever watchful of the malignant seed of dissent that lies hidden, still capable of destroying the cohesiveness of our society. Still, this is a day of celebration, not of fear. Today we are filled with joy. And so, in the name of the new regime of our great North continent, I officially open this jubilee. Let the festivities begin! Why did you turn the set off? We have to talk, Otto. This very minute? I was watching the general himself. This is serious. It was most interesting, Lita. He called us the malignant seed of dissent. (laughs) Not very flattering, is it? My dear brother, any minute now... Of course it's not flattering. But I really do believe he means well. The general means well? Yes. You see... I understand what motivates the man more clearly now. You mean you didn't understand before? I don't believe I've ever seen you so agitated, Lita. Shall I tell you why, Otto? It's quite simple. Our entire plan hinges on the fact that you understand General Morgan. Lisa, dearest, 
I actually believe you're losing faith in me. Oh, I just don't know. This whole idea of yours, it's too fantastic. Inspired genius, that's what it is. Inspired insanity is more like it. Too many things could go wrong. And I'm not even talking about the displacement process yet. That's another thing altogether. Those calculations of yours are going to have to be so precise. I have always been a master of precision, little sister. Oh, Otto, face that. We're old. Too old to be revolutionaries. Ah, visitors approaching oh. from the rear vestibule. Oh, no. Too old, you say? Well, obviously not too old to be arrested. How do you know it's the special police? I made sure my disloyal remarks were heard by the right ears. Bad news travels fast. Oh, Otto, please. Let's reconsider the whole plan. I'm frightened. Don't be, Lita. As you say, I'm an old man. What can they possibly do to me? Incarcerate you, interrogate you, torture you. You make it sound so grim. Discipline must be maintained. They have to make an example of someone. They need a human sacrifice. In what better time than the Jubilee? (gasps) They're here. Open this door at once. Well, Lita, release the auto lock and let the gentleman in. What if the plan doesn't work? We have to take that chance. Open immediately or we'll blast the door open. Otto, what if the general doesn't agree to your plan? Open the door, Lita. But what if he suspects me? Suspect such a sweet little old lady? Oh, come now. Oh, it could all be for nothing. For nothing. We're coming in, Professor. <laughs> Professor Otto Segrum. Yes? I'm Colonel Edward Paul of the Special Police. How do you do? It is my duty to inform you that you have been charged with treasonous and contemptible acts against the state. I see. I'm also obliged to advise you of your rights. My rights? I wasn't aware if one had any rights under the new regime. Ah, but you're mistaken. You have the right to resist arrest, and should you resist, I have the right to shoot you. Well, I assure you I won't put up a fight, Colonel. Oh, please, Colonel. My brother is not a well man. Old woman, I warn you not to interfere with this procedure. Come along, Professor. Of course, of course. Otto! Remember, my dear, remember the Latin, carpe diem. Oh, yes, Otto. Carpe diem. Benson. Yes, Your Excellency. Close that window. What, sir? That infernal racket is making my head explode. But it's the people, sir. I don't care. But it's you they're cheering. It is giving me a headache. Just close it. Very well, sir. Now, what is it? I pressed your other uniform, sir. My uniform? What on earth for, Benson? The interrogation, sir. What interrogation? Well, surely you haven't forgotten. Uh, I assumed you'd been informed. Informed of what? Believe me, General, the last thing I want to do is provoke another incident between you and Colonel Paul. Colonel Paul? What does he have to do with this? Sir... An hour ago, Colonel Paul, accompanied by two officers of the elite guard, took into custody Professor Otto Segrum. Who? Otto Segrum, the physicist. But he's 90 years old. But they say he's the acknowledged unofficial leader of the underground. Oh, what is Colonel Paul up to? I'm telling you what I heard. Heard from where? I'd rather not... Where, Benson? I, uh... I have a cousin in the motor pool. Oh, so, Colonel Edward Paul thinks he can go around arresting fruitcake scientists and not tell me. Fruitcake? Uh, uh, an old expression, Benson. It means having a brain baked with crazy notions. Yes, I think I know what Colonel Paul's game is. You do? Otto Segrim is a harmless old eccentric, and everybody knows it. But Paul wants to score points with a high council on this one. He'll goad and deride that old professor into making some sort of confession. A malignant seed of dissent, snuffed out by the illustrious colonel. <laughs> and where will I, General Morgan, be when this triumph is occurring? In bed asleep? Well, just don't stand there, Benson. Bring me my uniform. Yes, sir. Oh, who would have a gall at this hour? His most exalted residence. Johnson, main gate. I've just security cleared the general's visitor. What visitor? Lieutenant Johnson, the general is not expecting any visitors. Sir, the appointment roster confirms an audience with Citizen Smith at this hour. Citizen Smith? Oh, oh yes, Citizen Smith. I'd forgotten. Uh, very well. Disengage inner security screens. Yes, sir. Out. General... 
forgive me, but I had forgotten all about it. Mm-hmm. Now, why wasn't I told of an audience? I'm sorry, sir. It slipped my mind until this moment. I refuse to see anyone at this hour. But you have to see Citizen Smith. Who the devil is Citizen Smith? Phoenicia Smith, sir. Grandmother of the year. Who? Grandmother of the year, General. The embodiment of gentleness and virtue. The matron saint of the state. It's traditional. Even the hour of reception is traditional. I cannot be bothered. I would caution you, sir, not to flaunt tradition in a jubilee year. There are many uh, opponents of yours who would happily misconstrue such an action. That's her now. Shall I release the auto lock? Oh, Benson, is this going to take long? Well, if I may suggest, sir, do what you do every year. Shake her hand, offer her a toast, and send her away with a personally monogrammed souvenir new regime pen. All right, let's get it over with. You may enter his presence. Your Excellency, may I present Citizen Phonicia Smith. Charmed. This is an honor. Uh, oh, yes, Citizen Smith, I... I would like to shake your hand. Oh, Thank you, Your Excellency. Sir, if you will excuse me for a moment, I will attend to your uniform. <clears throat> now, uh, <clears throat> uh, may I uh, offer you a drink, citizen? Oh, no. No, thank you, sir. Yes. Well, before you go, uh, I would like to present you with a small token of our esteem. Oh, an old-fashioned ballpoint pen. How lovely. I'll treasure it always. Now, I would love to chat with you longer, Citizen Smith, but, but you see, there are some pressing matters of state to attend to. I have a confession to make, sir. I am not Citizen Smith. What? I am not Grandmother of the Year, although I have her identification ring. I'm Lita Sagrim. Sagrim? My brother Otto uses a little phrase. Latin, I believe. Copper, him, seize the opportunity... Grab the chance. Now, wait, wait. Just one moment, please. What is this all about? So that's what I did. I grabbed the chance. Venetia Smith is rather comfortably locked away. I took her place. So you see, sir, I shook hands with you instead. <laughs> oh, yes. You mean to tell me that, that you took all that trouble just to shake my hand? But of course, Your Excellency. This sweet old lady's little gloved hand shook your uncovered one. Carpe diem. Your skin has already absorbed the chemical film coating from the outside of my glove. Uh, yes. Uh, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, General, that you have just been poisoned. <laughs> History and legend are filled with examples of lethal brews administered to unknowing victims in the spirit of goodwill. In a way, then, it's almost an insult to think that the most friendly, amenable tradition, the handshake, can be transformed into a deadly ritual. But the unkindest cut, you cannot even trust a sweet little old lady to be just a sweet little old lady, is nothing sacred. We'll find out shortly. When I return with Act Two. The author is Horace, a wise and noble sage who walked the earth 2,000 years ago. What he actually wrote was Carpe diem quam minimum credula postero. Translation Seize the day, put no trust in tomorrow. Indeed, the only thing one can trust is the moment. Tomorrow may never come. On the other hand, tomorrow may come, surely enough. But what good is it if we are not there to see it arrive? A hundred years or so in the future, the most powerful man in our tactfully unnamed country is faced with an interesting dilemma. What did you say? You have been poisoned, Your Excellency. Poisoned? <laughs> By you? Oh, it's... Just like Otto told me it would be, that you wouldn't believe me. Now, listen, I do not have time for crude assassination attempts, Miss Segram. In fact, my patience with you is at an end. Well, then it is true what they say. 
You really do believe that you're indestructible. Now, I will be willing to forget the entire incident if you would kindly leave, Miss Segrim. I've heard rumors, but naturally I didn't believe them. It cost millions, but you do have something that protects your stomach lining. Please, Miss Segrim, you're a nice old lady. I don't want to put you under arrest. But nothing will protect you against the chemical you have just absorbed through the skin. It's a different matter entirely. Oh, wait a minute. Old lady? You called me an old lady. Miss Segrim, I am being much more tolerant than I ought to be. Old lady? Why, I'm the same age as you. Maybe even younger. I admit, with modern science, you look, oh, 50, 55. But you're about 78, 79 Miss Segrim, if you do not get... uh, 79? That's ridiculous. Is it? I don't know where you get your figures. You really don't know, do you? You really don't understand yet. What are you talking about? Time, General. Time. Sooner or later, we all run out of it. But you, you think you can go on forever. I want you out of this building immediately. It's merely due to my my good nature that you don't suffer anything worse. It's you who will suffer, General. In an hour or so, you will feel a slight tingling sensation in your fingers followed by tremors in the arms and legs, and then a sudden dizziness, all of which will disappear shortly. But they are all indications that the poisonous chemical has entered its final phase. Are you telling me that you would prefer to be arrested? Listen to me for just one minute. Very well. You have one minute, Miss Segrim. What has my brother done that is wrong? I'll tell you, General, though I suspect you won't believe me. Well, I'm waiting. He found a way to be young again. What? It's very complex. It's it's chemistry, physics. Oh, I don't know exactly what it is. But it has to do with space. He can take a person, any person, and place them right where they were any time in the past. Right into the space they were in a year ago, ten years ago, fifty years ago. You have half a minute left. Oh, how can I explain it? It's like moving figures on a chessboard. Except the squares represent spaces in time. And whatever point you move into, you become exactly what you were at that moment. Exactly the same physically, mentally. A person could even live their life over again. Well, do you understand me? Of course, they would live it over exactly the same. Because nothing else in the past had changed. Miss Segrim, your time is up. You still don't understand? My brother has created a time machine. Miss Segrim, I could not care less. But you will, General. In a very short time, you will. Because, you see, time is something of which you have precious little. I gave strict orders to let no... Let no one what? General. (laughs) You seem somewhat surprised to see me. What are you doing here, Your Excellency? I might ask you the same question. I was interrogating the prisoner, sir. Oh. Well, what prisoner would that be? Professor Otto Sagrin. Oh, indeed. I, um... Well, that is we arrested him this evening. That's odd. I do not recall signing any arrest certificate. Well, you didn't. Exactly. Then whose authority were you operating under? My own, sir. Uh Uh-huh. You're taking on a lot more authority these days, aren't you, Colonel Paul? Well, I'm sure you would have approved if Your Excellency was acquainted with the case. Indeed. And why was I not acquainted with the case? Well, I did not wish to disturb Your Excellency at such a late hour. Oh, how thoughtful. I would have informed Your Excellency first thing in the morning. You seem to be taking a lot of initiative lately, Colonel. Well, I was forced to act quickly, sir. Oh, This man is a menace to the state. (laughs) Otto Segrim, you must be joking. He's a known subversive. Colonel, Colonel, you know, you've been reading your own press releases again. I can produce 50 witnesses who will swear. Oh, I'm sure that you can. He must be tried and executed. Of course he must be executed. By tomorrow morning, the public will demand it. The people want justice done. Yes, I'm quite sure that you have seen to that. Now, forgive me, Your Excellency, but... uh... I get the impression that you dislike the idea of a public execution. I am tired of all these executions, Colonel. Tired, sir? How many do we have? Fifty, sixty a year? Executions are the safeguard of the regime. 
Am I to understand that you no longer... Don't put words in my mouth, Colonel. And I wasn't... All right, all right. I'm obliged to execute Segrum. But between us, Colonel, how is a 93-year-old man a threat to the regime? There's been talk, General. Oh, enlighten me. He has been working on a certain device. What kind of device? He remarked to a colleague that he had invented a mechanism that could change the course of history. Yes. Well, don't you see? Could only be one thing. What? A bomb. You you have evidence, of course. Well, uh... I mean, your men searched the laboratory, of course. Yes, sir. And? We didn't find anything as of yet. (laughs) (laughs) Colonel. Sir? Colonel, you are... A jackass! Your Excellency, I'm only doing my job. And mine, perhaps. General, I have to interrogate a prisoner. You are dismissed. But the prisoner... I will proceed with the interrogation. (laughs) Professor Otto Segrim? Your Excellency, this is an honor. Let's dispense with the traditional hard sell and customary torture. And you just confess immediately. Confess to what? Criminal and traitorous acts against the regime. I have nothing to confess. Well, confess anyway. It looks better. What do you mean, it looks better? Well, you know, on the execution decree. You'd actually execute an old man. Professor, you are old. I am old. Who isn't old? What does chronological age mean nowadays? Look at me. Just look at me. How how old would you say I am? Fifty? Fifty-five? Yes, I am 78. That's the miracle of modern science. You don't feel at all strange? What do you mean, strange? A tingling in your fingers? Mm, No. A little dizziness, perhaps? I am the one who is doing the interrogating. Didn't my sister pay you a visit this evening? Yes. A very attractive woman, but for her age. Deliberately tried to provoke me. She told me. We spoke briefly... But let us get down to business now, shall we, Professor? There is no antidote, you know. You know, I, I, I regret having to execute you in the morning, but it's one of those irreversible situations. So is salicylic dimeth compound C42, the poison that is slowly penetrating your blood. So hold on, Professor. Your sister tried to convince me that I had been poisoned, but neither of you understands that... You seem remarkably unperturbed for a poisoned general. Let me enlighten you. I am unperturbed because I cannot be poisoned. I am immune. Is that a fact? You think others haven't tried to assassinate me before? General. I haven't held on to this job for 25 years because I'm lucky. I... Well, I can tell you. I never get into my car until after it has been checked. I always wear a blast shield. And my stomach lining and the skin cells have been permanently treated with a special, unique chemical that immediately neutralizes any corrosive or poison. I know. I created it some 20 years ago. No, no, it was formulated by my scientist general-in-chief. I know him very well. Old pupil of mine. Bit of a scoundrel, though. Well, since I created the protective chemical, I also created the destructive answer to it. Hmm? I don't believe you. I think you should start feeling the discomfort by now. Professor, I have been more than patient with you and... But why am I discussing chemistry? Physics. Now, there's an adventure. Distance. Space. Time. An infinity of wonder in a single point. Oh! Something the matter, your Excellency? Uh, No. Your hands are shaking. It's nothing, it's nothing. Yes, your hands are shaking. The poison has taken effect. No, you're wrong now. Now, what's the matter with your feet? Can't you keep your balance? No, I have to to sit down for a moment. It's these, well, it's these new boots. I told Benson a hundred times to break them in for me. The dizziness? Uh, no, it's impossible. I would give you, on the outside, another six or seven hours. Oh, oh my, my clipboard, I, I... I lost my grip. But of course you did. It can't be. And now, General Morgan, we arrive at the logical conclusion, the terminus of this situation. What? What do you want? I ask very little. What? 
You tell me. I want you to let me change the course of history. It is believed because it is absurd. It is certain because it is impossible. This is commonly known as Tertullian's rule of faith. Notice how we repeatedly refer back to ancient Romans for present-day wisdom. What is absurd, after all? The absurdities of yesterday have become the commonplace of today. And so isn't it only logical that the impossibilities of the present are merely the sure things of the future? And you may be sure of one thing in the immediate future. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Whence this pleasing hope, this fond desire, this longing after immortality. So spoke the poet. He knew, as well as we all know, each of us longs to live forever. The bravest among us can become the most shriveled coward in the face of death. Reduced to our most primitive fear, man strikes out and fights, but more often begs, pleads, for an extension of this heavenly loan. The general is dying. There is no antidote, unless it lies in the bizarre request that has just been made. You want me to allow you, Professor Segrim, to change the course of history? Correct, General. Well, how can I allow you to do anything? I'm, I'm dying, don't you remember? You're dying now. But not if you let me send you back in time. Send me back in time? That's right. Back to a time. A space in which you are unaffected by this poison. Any moment in your past life. Time is my chess game, General. I can move you around like a grandmaster. Yes, your sister tried to explain this gibberish to me. Gibberish? Time travel is impossible. What if I told you it was possible? Very possible. What if I believed you? What would be the point? The point? (laughs) How appropriate. The entire universe is a point, General, multiplying itself into an infinite line, becoming upon itself a square, squaring itself into a cube, cubing itself into other dimensions. Space becomes more and more cluttered. Time exists side by side. The past, the present, the future, all from a single point. You're crazy. No, General. The world is crazy, but I remain a fixed point in the maelstrom. Oh, why have you done this to me? What do you hope to gain? A new life. But why do you need me? If, if you think you can go back in time, why don't you just go? Because my going back would change little. I would do the same things all over again. But you... Me? But that's where your reasoning falls apart, Professor Segrim. You cannot change history. You send me back, I would do the same things over again, too. Of course. That is, if all other things remained unchanged, if every incident repeated itself, if you met all the people in your life again. However. However what? Suppose that events were to be changed just slightly. What if you met a person you didn't meet the first time around? A person who would change your entire destiny. I do not believe a word of this. You, you said that I'm dying. There's nothing I can do to change that. But you, Professor, you still will be executed. God, God! What will you tell the God that you have been poisoned? Uh, They are all faithful retainers of Colonel Edward Paul. The news will be a source of great rejoicing. How can I just be standing here calmly talking to you? Why aren't you torturing me for an antidote? I don't know. It's because you know it's useless to fight. What's the matter with me? Maybe this is all a trick. You know it isn't. I don't want to die. You don't have to die. But you said... What is a point in time but the crux of events? A certain hinge on which key decisions swing. A pivot steering through the wave of the past. Look... Old man, none of this makes sense. If I go back in time, I'll be young again. Fine. There's no poison in my bloodstream, right? But there's also memory of the future. I'm not older. I'm not 
Why, sir? I'm the same. Exactly the same person I was before at that moment in time. So, it's... It's useless. No one can change the past. I need you, Morgan. You are the hub. Without you, there would have been no uprising in 21. No great revolution. The country would have had a different destiny. A more gentle, a happier destiny. It would have been inefficient, unplanned, lawless. But would it have been so evil? Evil? If you could only see the evil, then you would understand. Your Excellency. Uh, what do you want, Colonel? I have most urgent business. Well, can't it wait? It cannot. The regime high council requests your presence at once. What? Now? An emergency session, sir. Again, Colonel, I was not informed. As you are aware, General, the council has the undisputed right to convene at any time without prior consent of the Supreme High Commander. I still want to know... Are you in some kind of pain, sir? Well, me? No. No, not at all. You, uh... You don't look at all well. Colonel, I... I hate to disappoint you, but... You see, I, I, I never felt better in my life. And so, Your Excellency, and fellow members of the Council, because we are all agreed that a state of emergency exists, we urge that this can be adopted. Now, let, let me get this straight. You actually propose to place this drug in the public water system? Correct, Your Excellency. But as I understand it, this... Drug renders the individual docile to the point of near idiocy. That is not quite so, Excellency. Then what is so? Excellency, another outstanding point of this plan is that it avoids the necessity of bloodshed. <clears throat> you, you are out of order, Colonel Poor. Well, uh, Council Member McGuinn, does or does this drug not cause permanent damage to the brain? Sir, are you feeling all right? You appear slightly... Answer my question. The long-run effects have not yet been ascertained. However, there is a slight possibility that some minor damage to less important areas of the brain could be attributed... This entire proposal is insane. The people must be controlled, Excellency. You've always said that. Yes, yes, I know, but not as sheep, Colonel. The regime is threatened, sir. From where? By who? Now just look around you. From everywhere. Yes, yes, there is a threat. There always is a threat. But not the way you think. A threat to sanity. A threat to clear thinking. A threat to sound judgment. I move that we call this proposition to a vote. Out of order. Ah, yes, let's call it to a vote. I, I second the motion. Yes, yes you, I do too. Yes. You all of you wish to vote on such a depraved idea. General... We demand the vote. Yes, yes. What are you Very well. Very well. Proposed that all public reservoirs in District 8 be treated with large quantities of the nerve drug Boromil. All those members in favor show hands. Opposed? I see. The resolution passes. No. Your Excellency, you've been outvoted. I see said no. But the vote was unanimous. I veto it. And we'll call another vote for tomorrow. And I will veto it tomorrow. And the day after? I... Well, of course I will. You weren't planning to be absent for any subsequent uh, vote, were you, sir? Because then the resolution would be immediately carried. I... I will be here. You said that there is some kind of solution, something crazy, impossible, but a solution. Yes, General. Well, I, I put my faith in anything. Now, what is this deal that you want to make? You let me go. That's it. All I need is an hour. Oh, what can you do in an hour? Change the course of history. Keep saying that. I, I still don't believe that you can. A point in time. A terminus from which all events radiate. Do you really believe that you can take me back in time? Precisely. Back to before I was poisoned? Yes. You can change events? That part is theory. I can move you in a space of time like a bubble. Pluck you from one moment. Place you into another. Oh, I almost believe that you're crazy enough to be able to do it. I can place you back 
as you were years ago. How many years? Back to a terrace 50 years ago. Music playing in the room inside. Old-fashioned kind of dance music. You know the kind, don't you? Oh, yes, I know the kind. The band was playing inside. But you, alone, unmoved, stood outside, deciding at that instant the course the rest of your life would take. Do you remember that night? Yes. Yes, I remember. I was 28 years old, going on 29, and I wasn't dancing. How could I? It was her engagement party. I hated her for hurting me that way, but I had to come and see what he looked like for myself. That's when you decided, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, that's when I decided. It was a turning point in your life, wasn't it? Yes. You were embittered, and you decided to enter the military and make a career for yourself. Yes. You became cold and calculating. But what if you had met someone else that night? Would things have been different? Uh, who's to say? I didn't meet anyone else, though. But if you had... Well, I don't know. A nice, gentle girl who would have brought out the gentleness in you. No, no, it's too late to wallow in conjecture. What, what is past is past. Perhaps, perhaps not. If you hadn't been a general, you might have been a doctor, a writer, who knows, even a president. Uh, there is no presidency that hasn't been for 25 but years. But there might still be a presidency. The government might still be a democracy. If there hadn't been a revolution led by you. Sigurd. What's happening to me? Are the images clear? What am I feeling? What am I seeing? You've passed, uh, General, like any dying uh, man. Your life is flashing before you. Don't understand. Why are you doing this to me? You understand. Don't let me die, Sigurd. But of course you won't die. Don't let me die. The council votes again tomorrow. Release me and uh, I promise that the council will never vote at all. Because it will not exist. Can you really change things? Yes, it's possible, but you have to let me send you back. I'll be just as I was. I'll have no memory of the future. It won't matter. But I'll, I'll simply repeat my life over exactly up to this moment. Not if I send her back to... What? Send who back? The girl you should have met. The girl who might have changed your life. What girl? If you had stayed on that terrace a few seconds longer... You might have met her. I'm not changing events. I'm altering individual bubbles of space, moving yours slightly ahead so that you remain on that terrace just a few moments longer than you did so long ago. But who would I have met? Who, Sigrid? My sister, Lita. Lita? You remarked before that she was attractive. Lita, but, but she's old. She's old now. But she wouldn't be if I sent her back 50 years uh, ago. She'd be 25. Like this whole thing's crazy. You're a dying man. Like the old adage, you're drowning and I'm throwing you a life preserver. Uh, you might not believe in the life preserver, but it's the only one in the water. I want to believe that you can change things. Get me out of here uh, so I can send you both back. I wish I could believe. Then in the name of heaven, let me try. God... God! God, I want this man released into my custody. Are you both ready, Lita? Yes, Otto. Miss Segrip, if this machine of your brother's actually works, we will be meeting again. Yes, we'll be meeting again, General. But neither of us will remember any of this. I know. That's why it's chance. You see, I like you now. <laughs> I, I like you now. But will you like me then? Will you? How are engaged now? Remember. Remember. Not everyone can get a chance to change the course of history. Excuse me. 
Yes. What do you want? I, I didn't realize anyone was out here. Oh, I just wanted some fresh air. Well, who are you? I don't remember seeing you inside. It's funny. I just got here. I was about to start a dance with my boyfriend, but suddenly I'm outside here. Oh, you, you came with your boyfriend? Oh, he's not really a boyfriend. Just a date. What's your name? Lita. Lita? Mm-hmm. Hey, very pretty name. Thank you. But then, <laughs> you're a very pretty girl. <laughs> well, you're rather nice yourself, Mr. Uh, Morgan. Ulysses Morgan. Uh, you know, a minute ago, I was depressed and bitter, unhappy. But now... Yes? I have a question to ask you. Well, ask me. Lita, where have you been all my life? Indeed, where? A very innocent question. But this time, the answer might be a little out of the ordinary. Another question we might ask is, have we changed the course of history? All we've really done is put a little romance into young Mr. Morgan's life. But do we have any guarantee that he won't turn out exactly the way he did before? Or is love such a magic ingredient after all? I'll be back shortly. Turn backward, O time, in your flight. Make me a child again, just for tonight. So goes the verse of Miss Allen. Is there really only one moment, one crucial moment, that if lived over differently, could change the course of our lives, and perhaps even the lives around us? We are, after all, part of one great tapestry, and the threads of each individual life weave together to form the whole. Our cast included Norman Rose, Jackson Beck, Ralph Bell, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.